weekend. It's gonna be early, which is nice. Saludos, uh, respected viewers. Here I am on La Rambla in Barcelona, the most famous street in, the Bar in Barcelona, or well, Las Ramblas, as they sometimes call it. I don't know which one's Castilian and which one's Catalan. So obviously this is the capital of Catalonia, a uh, region in Spain. Some Catalans prefer to call it a nation. It was a declaration of independence almost two years ago. I won't be too distracted by that, but oddly things have come full circle. I'm here in front of Cafe Mocha, because this was uh, where George, Wa George Orwell spent a lot of his time when he was here in 1936 and 1937. So George Orwell, you may know, was born in India in 1903 into a British and French family. And then um, he went to um, live in uh, Oxfordshire with his mother, whilst his father was still working in the opium department of the British Indian government. So um, uh, Orwell, he went to Eton, he was a King Scholar there. But uh, although he had extraordinary literary gifts, he frittered away his time seen as an idler. And it was so lackadaisical, he hadn't kept his Latin and Greek up to speed, so he wasn't gonna win a scholarship to uh, Oxford or Cambridge. And it was beyond the family finances for him to go on to tertiary education without that. So he joined the Burma police and he went out to Burma police and um, was promoted very high, very fast. British officers in the Burma police were promoted very rapidly. And he was in charge of policing tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people by the age of 20. But anyway, he got fed up with it very quickly and he gave up what would have been a lucrative career. And uh, he came back to Europe. He started, he became a socialist. Um, he uh, joined the Labour Party. Um, anyway, and he decided to be a full-time writer, but obviously it was a very hand-to-mouth existence. Um, so he was really impressed with democratic socialism. He began to see how communism in the Soviet Union was going very badly wrong, how it become totalitarian, how it was oppressive. There was no freedom of, liberty, freedom of speech, really no liberty. There were these show trials. They held political prisoners by the million. Torture was used on a huge scale. They deliberately starved millions of people to death. The refugees fled abroad um, and then flagrant large-scale lying was official policy and all the rest of it but um uh well he also he also detested um uh, fascism and that was on the rise there was a fascist government in italy 1933 the nazi party came to office in germany and july 1936 um a civil war broke out here in spain and so really it was the nationalists as in right wingers against the republicans who were left wingers so that was that it's actually quite complicated on the national side are people who be seen as mainstream as conservatives, some are Christian fundamentalists, the Catholic type, um, some are monarchists and all sorts. Some are actually slightly liberal, but just so abhorred communism, they said well, we've, got to, we've got to help anyone who's anti-communist. On the other side, the so-called Republican side, there were nationalists, both Stalinists and Trotskyites, who were at daggers drawn. Remember Trotsky had been pushed out by Stalin and gone abroad. Trotsky has still had many followers in other countries. There were anarchists, Catalan nationalists, Basque nationalists, there were social democrats and so on, left liberals. But uh, so um, Orwell, we known as George Orwell, really is Eric Blair, decided he had to do his bit for the Spanish Republic. So he decided to come here to Spain and um, he uh, went, to, went to France. He got an introduction, the Communist Party, British Communist Party didn't trust him, felt he was politically unreliable. He entered in, had an interview with the redoubtable Harry Pollitt who was General Secretary of the British Communist Party. Um, and, uh, but however, uh, the Labour Party accredited him. You had to have some sort of introduction. And so he, he had dinner in Paris with an American writer who told him that um, he was really a fool to believe in these ideals. And um, uh, he was just gonna get himself killed for something that really was not his quarrel. Undeterred, um, Orwell came here, heedless of um, this, um, what should I say, this, this counsel from uh, this American chap um, and his, his cynicism. So he crossed the border, he joined PUM. Partido Obrera Unificacion Marxista. So the uh, Workers' uh, United Marxist Party. And um, he described as an anti-fascist on his, on his uh, papers. So that was that. So um, he joined, joined um, a militia here, soldiers who had minimal training. They were rushed through basic training. Discipline was very lax, it was more or less by persuasion. People promoted by merit. And so the officers on the Republican side, only about half of them had actually proper military training. He was in Lenin barracks for a while. Obviously, it had been renamed Lenin not long before. He said so many things were, were, were black and red, as in anarchists were running them. Anarchists who believed in no private property. Whoever uses the property owns it as a commune, as a farm, as a factory, as a railway, anything like that. 
and the anarchists and um, the communists were often at each other's throats. But uh, anyway, he said there was a, such a spirit of egalitarianism uh, uh, there. A prostitute looked you in the face as an equal. He said that the, the, the shoe shine boys, they were often anarchists having their boxes in red and black. So um, he was buoyed up with hope and he felt that this was the future and fighting against a, a detestable cause. One thing is religion is very much repressed here. So soon he went up to the front. He spoke, uh, he spoke French. He pretty soon uh, picked up some Catalan and Catalan was spoken in more the Castilian at the time. So fighting on the Aragon front, although there wasn't actually very much fighting. Their main enemies were cold and hunger. Shortage of just about anything issued with a, with a German rifle 40 years old. Uh, and that was that. So he made some trips back to Barcelona. His wife, Eileen O'Shocknessy, was English of Irish descent. She came out here to visit him. She's a woman who deserves to be written about rather more, um, quite an intellectual. In an era about 1% of women went on to university. She not only went on to university, she had, she had a PhD. But so Orwell got leave to come back here sometimes and he saw how the situation was rapidly deteriorating. Um, that um, the bourgeoisie had overthrown were somehow coming back into the fore, even under a supposedly socialist system. And the Stalinists were spending more time trying to eliminate their enemies, their Trotsky enemies, than they were fighting against the, the, the nationalists. Um, and so there were purges here. It was like a civil war within a civil war. Um, the Stalinists didn't like anarchists one bit. They wanted iron discipline. They were very authoritarian. They were totally intolerant of the press. They were accusing dedicated anti-fascists of in fact being in the pay of the fascists and so on. And so this Stalinist run secret police was going ar around to arrest them. So the Spanish Republic, it was the lawful government of Spain. It held the League of Nations nation seat for Spain. It was legally recognized and it had diplomatic relations with many other countries. So they, they were fighting against um, a rebellion. So they would call the nationalists insurgents or rebels. And the people on the Republican side, they would often call them loyalists. But um, anyway, um, uh, Georges Kopp, one of his French uh, uh, comrades, was arrested, held incommunicado, could well have been executed. But through diplomatic representations, he was released. The United Kingdom and France had said that their people must not go to Spain. Some of them already had gone. There was in international brigades as a non spaniards who came here to fight for the Republican side. On the national side, there were volunteers from other countries, such as Ireland, such as Great Britain, who came to fight for Christian civilization, as they saw it, against uh, Stalinist oppression. Obviously, had the Republicans won, there would have been a second civil war between Stalinists against most of the other lot. And um, so some of the Catalans who were against uh, Franco, Franco said in the national side, were not particularly radical. They just wanted autonomy or even independence for Catalonia. So Franco was perhaps um, foolish not to offer them something not to divide their enemies, not to make concessions, not to be more political about it. Likewise to the Basque um, separatists, many of whom were in many ways small C conservative. Um, but uh, that was that. So um, in the middle of 1937, uh, he slipped over the border. Um, his name was on an arrest list by this Stalinist run a secret police. He might well have been put up against a wall and shot Eric Blair back through France and back to the United Kingdom. So he only spent about six months here in Spain, but um, it had a salutary effect on him. It redoubled his hatred of Stalinism and began to see it as a sort of twin evil with uh, Nazism uh, and see how totalitarianism is obviously detestable, is destructive of everything that uh, he held dear. And thereafter, he began writing everything for social democracy, which would more or less be the Labour Party, the Socialist Party in France, the Social Democrats in Germany, um, uh, or the Social Democrats here in Spain. He thought that was the way forward, that was the way to a brighter future. And they must uh, oppose uh, oppressive tendencies both uh, left and right. He later wrote a memoir of it, uh, Homage to Catalonia, which uh, is um, very readable, written in these sparse prose, deliberately using demotic lexis, not trying to be high flown, and it's got uh, exceptional lucidity to it. So that's George Orwell, who spent some time here on La Rambla in 1936 and 37.